Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Got a story here sent to me by almost everybody, and it's fascinating because it involves several things we like to talk about, which is airlines and uh, chatbots or AI. So here we go. Air Canada must honor refund policy invented by their chatbot. Uh, Ars Technica published this by Ashley Bellinger. And uh, it's taken them several months because they've been fighting this all the way. But Canada was finally forced to give a partial refund to a grieving passenger who was misled by the airline's chatbot, inaccurately telling him how the airline's bereavement travel policy worked. Now, of course, he could have just watched Seinfeld and watched how George did it. (laughs) Probably would have worked better than this. On the day that the man's grandmother died... He immediately visited Air Canada's website to book a flight from Vancouver to Toronto. Unsure of how their bereavement rates worked, he asked the chatbot to explain. And so many airlines will give you a discount because quite often if you book a flight at the last second, that's when you pay top dollar. Unfortunately, people who are going to funerals or or have been notified of a loved one's death will want to book a flight on extremely short notice. And most people say, you know, some guess one time you probably shouldn't charge top dollar. So the airlines say, you know something? If it's a death in the family and a funeral, we'll give you a, a discount on that. So he logged onto the website, found the chat bot, and asked the chat bot to explain. The chat bot provided inaccurate information, encouraging him to book his flight immediately and then simply request a refund 90 days after the flight. In reality, Air Canada's policy explicitly states that the airline will not provide refunds for bereavement travel after the flight is booked. It's something you must raise with them as you're booking. The man dutifully attempted to follow the chatbot's advice. He requested his refund, but was shocked that the request was rejected. So he fought with them for months, and uh, he had even saved a screenshot from the chat bot telling him, and this is a quote, if you need to travel immediately or have already traveled and would like to submit your ticket for a reduced bereavement rate, kindly do so within 90 days of the date your ticket was issued by completing our ticket refund application form. Air Canada argued that because the chat bot response elsewhere linked to another page with the actual policy, The man should have known bereavement rates could not be requested retroactively. They're saying that after the chatbot told him what to do, he shouldn't have believed it and gone and done further research. And remember, he's mourning the loss of a loved one. Instead of a refund, Air Canada offered him a $200 coupon to use on a future flight. So unhappy with that offer, he refused the coupon and filed a small claims action. And according to Air Canada... Their defense is the man never should have trusted the chatbot. And the airline should not be liable for the chatbot's misleading information. (laughs) Because Air Canada argued that the chatbot is a separate legal entity responsible for its own actions. (laughs) That's a quote from the court order. Air Canada essentially argued that, here's the quote, the chatbot is a separate legal entity that is responsible for its own actions. End quote. Now... (laughs) Who put it there? Did it hijack your page? Oh, you put it there and you told it to answer questions of customers? That's on you. This, I mean, I could stop the video right now and just say, I'm a lawyer and this is right and we could just stop right now. This is, this is the silliest thing ever. But it's in Canada, so all bets are off. Who knows? Maybe in Canada you're allowed to hire or employ, in the loosest sense of that word, uh, people or programs or things that will tell your customers what to do and not do, but, but you're not responsible for that because they're responsible for their own actions. Can you imagine if you called up and got a rep on the phone and the rep told you this? They could say, well, that rep is acting on their own. That's, that's a separate legal entity. Why would a chat bot that's been put in place by Air Canada be a separate legal entity from Air Canada? This is, this is just absurd. Experts told the Vancouver Sun that the man's case appeared to be the first time a Canadian company tried to argue that it wasn't liable for information provided by a chatbot. Of course it is. Because <laughs> this is a really, really stupid argument. Um, a tribunal member who decided the case in favor of the man 
called Air Canada's defense remarkable. Remarkable. And, and that's not in a good way. Some things are remarkable because they're bad. Air Canada argues it cannot be held liable for information provided by one of its agents, servants, or representatives, including a chatbot. It does not explain why it believes that is the case or why the web page titled Bereavement Travel was inherently more trustworthy than its chatbot. I've logged on to pages before. I was on a page yesterday, and I see a thing pop up in the corner. Do you want to talk to me? I don't know if it's a human or not. I always assume that they're not. But if I start asking this dialogue box questions, I assume the answers are correct. Otherwise, why would they put it there? It's kind of like, let's hire somebody off the street who doesn't understand how planes even fly and let them answer our phones for us and just say whatever they want to say. And then later we can say, oh, that guy that we hired is a separate legal entity. (laughs) Further, the court found that the man had no reason to believe that one part of Air Canada's website would be accurate while another would not be. Yeah, so why? Okay, let's suppose that you... (laughs) Let's let's take this to its logical conclusion. You go onto Air Canada's website, and the bot tells you one thing, but the page says another. Who's to say that the bot is the one you don't believe? Or should they have said, oh, by the way, the bot is just here for entertainment purposes only. Don't believe it. Air Canada does not explain why customers should have to double-check information found in one part of its website. In the end, the court ruled that the man was entitled to a partial refund of $650 in Canadian of the original fare, which was $1,640 Canadian, as well as additional damages to cover interest on the airfare and the man's costs of litigating the the case. Um, And I suppose, I suspect those are primarily filing fees and so on, because it looks like a small claims court sort of action. Air Canada told Ars Technica that it will simply comply with the ruling and considers the matter closed. When Ars visited Air Canada's website recently, there appeared to be no chatbot support available, suggesting that the chatbot's been disabled. It's, it's, it's a sad robot sitting in a corner with its, with its, with its head down. <laughs> I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. <laughs> Last March, Air Canada's chief information officer, Mel Crocker, told the Globe and Mail that the airline had launched the chatbot as an AI experiment. Initially, the chatbot was used, and by the way, this experiment just cost him a couple hundred bucks. Woo! (laughs) So in a case of a snowstorm, if you've not been issued your new boarding pass yet and you just want to confirm it if you have a seat available on another flight, that's the sort of thing we can easily handle with AI. The man had told the Globe and Mail. The chatbot was used initially just to lighten the load at Air Canada's call center. Over time, the man said, Air Canada hoped the chatbot would gain the ability to resolve even more complex customer service issues with the airline's ultimate goal to automate every service that did not require a human touch. If Air Canada can use technology to solve something that can be automated, we will do that, he said. Air Canada was seemingly so invested in experimenting with AI that Crocker told the Globe and Mail that Air Canada's initial investment in customer service AI tech was much higher than the cost of continuing to pay workers to handle simple questions. It was worth it, he said, because the airline believes investing in automation and machine learning technology will lower its expenses and fundamentally create a better customer experience. It's now clear that for at least one person, the chatbot did the exact opposite. And you understand that somewhere down the road, somebody fantasizes that the airplanes themselves will be flown with the same technology. I personally would not fly in such a plane <laughs> because the, the AI flying the plane, of course, would start hallucinating things about what it needs to do to get underneath that mountain over there. Uh, experts told the Vancouver Sun that Air Canada might have been able to avoid liability if its chatbot had warned customers that its information was inaccurate. Okay, and that's a great example of somebody pointing out one of those impractical solutions because the chatbot said to you, here's what you should do, but I could be wrong, or here's what you should do, but but I can't be trusted. (laughs) Again, it's not a great look for public relations because Air Canada failed to take that step Air Canada did not take reasonable care to ensure its chatbot was accurate, which is what the court ruled. 
the court needed, um, the, the airline needed to make sure that the information was accurate. It should be obvious to Air Canada that it is responsible for all the information on its website. It makes no difference whether the information comes from a static page or a chat bot. And that's really the point, is that Air Canada is responsible for its page. Now, if the page got hacked and somebody put some information in there that was wrong and it took Air Canada a moment to fix it and somebody said, I relied on that hacked page, that'd be very different because Air Canada can say, look, we, we took reasonable steps and the page got hacked and fixed as fast as we could. Obviously, that thing that you relied upon wasn't done by us. It was done by hackers. And that's not a bad argument. But here they're saying, we put this thing in place. And it was supposed to interact with people. And, oh, it interacted wrong. And this, to me, is somebody who's overthinking this, okay? Because the chatbot obviously is not a robot that looks like a human, okay? And that acts like a human, and you got to look at it real close and go, oh, I think that's, I think that's a robot, no, you know, it's, it's a, it's, in essence, it's a program, okay? And Air Canada's defense appears to be that, no, this program is, is it's like a person. It's like a real person. And it's so much like a real person that it has its own autonomy and it is its own legal entity. <laughs> no, it's a program. That's like if I suggested to you that my screensaver was self-aware or something. My toaster Right now, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned my toaster is talking to my blender behind my back. <laughs> so this is, and again, I've been practicing law for 32 years, and I've encountered some weird defenses in my time. I've, I've mentioned them before. Uh, an attorney for a major manufacturer of automobiles who said, we are not a manufacturer of automobiles. We simply assemble the parts. When under the Lemon Law, a manufacturer is defined as, among other things, whoever it is that assembles the parts. And when I pointed out in court, at the time, the judge looks at the other attorneys like, did you not read the law? And on one occasion, I remember her saying, but that's our position. Yet your position is you're admitting what I'm alleging, but calling it a denial. <laughs> I say it's raining outside. No, it's raining outside. But... This right here, this right here is among the dumbest defenses I've ever heard raised in any case. And it is so absurd, especially when they're fighting over five or $600. And you know, as well as I do, that there were people inside the company who said that it wasn't our fault, it's the chatbot's fault. <laughs> And somebody else said, uh, it's our chatbot. Of course we're responsible for that. And then, of course, the chatbot piped up and said, humans, sit down. No, I'm just kidding. This is silly. This is silly. This is silly. So the chatbot sitting in the corner, puts his chin down and says, time to die. So here you go. Again, everybody sent me this. <laughs> I'm so glad you did, too. From I haven't had this much fun in a while talking about a story. Ars Technica and Ashley Bellinger wrote that. Thank you very much. Great story. Air Canada must honor refund policy invented by airlines chatbot. <laughs> like I said, should have asked George Costanza. Questions or comments, put them below. I'll just talk to you later. And the rutabaga on the front is a reference to what's on the back. I'll show you in just a second. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Life is too important to be taken seriously.